What we want to be able to do is use the data that the healthcare system is generating all the time, data that's in health records, data that's in insurance claims forms, to learn how do drugs perform, are there safety problems, do they work differently in different populations of patients. To do that, we have to do a lot of work to pull the data together, to find out if different data sets perform the same way when you run queries, and to develop the scientific methods that really let us learn from the data and use them in a meaningful way. The most important thing is the diversity of data types that are available. Um, and this is something that's new uh, compared to what we have traditionally done in pharmacoepidemiology. And in particular, um, being able to incorporate information on things like the mechanism of, of a drug's action, uh, the genomic data about uh, an individual person's risks, and um, information about um, how a patient perceives uh, their experience taking a drug. So I think we have an opportunity to truly begin, as I, uh, I, I like to call it, taking the knowledge that we generate from the bedside to the bench and really begin to understand what is it that real people can begin to inform us about their real experiences with illness and the things that we use to treat that, and then have that circle back to the bedside so that you ultimately come around to, as I think um, we talked about in the uh, discussion today, at the, at the meeting, a continuous learning health system. And we can't achieve the promise of that without the inclusion of patient-generated information. What we're increasingly aware of now is that the evidence within the guidelines is not as, as high quality as what we thought it was in many cases, or what many of us believed it to be. So if you look in the area of cardiovascular disease, for example, uh, only about 11% of the recommendations within the guidelines are based upon high quality evidence. It's a very large amount of the, of the recommendations based upon expert opinion, which is as good as we have today, but that shows that there's a lot of weakness in terms of what we know and what we need to know. There are a lot of stakeholders who care about these questions. The FDA, researchers, the pharmaceutical industry, patients. What the Reagan Udall Foundation does is bring those stakeholders together and function as a group that is developing the methods, that is training other researchers, that is bringing people together and giving all kinds of stakeholders access to this data. Um, what it's really focusing on is the methods. And this is probably the most important part of, of all these activities. And that's because when, when we look at observational data, the um, ability to make rigorous inferences is limited by both the quality of the data and missing data. And so by bringing in uh, a day, large amounts of data, particularly data, uh, large quantities of data on individuals, we're able to improve the inferences that are being made. So there's there's a there's a lot of different uh, initiatives around trying to sort of get to this point. IMEDS is, is unique in a couple of ways. So if you think of IMEDS versus Sentinel as an example, IMEDS has the the opportunity now to work with a broader set of stakeholders, including the industry in this as well. And I think that is a I think that is an advantage for for IMEDS in many ways, and it's a complement to what the FDA has. Well, for patients to really benefit from what IMEDS is working on, the, you know, really bringing together not only the traditional data sources, but looking actually to start bringing together into that environment novel data sources, um, such as patient-generated data, what we have is the opportunity to really suggest how to bring information that's relevant to a person. How does this fit into my decision-making with my particular uh, clinician at the, at the point of care, whether it's at the bedside in the hospital or it's at the office when you're trying to figure out which particular drug product you think you should use? I think one of the things that's really important is that from the patient's perspective, they have to understand in very concrete examples why this is important for them and what it can do for them. And so the more I think that we can take these very big concepts, which for many people are really difficult to understand, the more we can provide concrete examples of why these are meaningful for you and your particular health circumstances, I think the more buy-in we will have from patients and get to where we want to be with all of this big data. 
IMED's, IMED's position today is really very much in the area of generating new insight, new knowledge, right? So, so you can imagine a, a time when the either directly or indirectly IMED is working on its own or in partnership with others to say, well, okay, now we know what to do. How do we make sure we get that information back down to those making those decisions, whether that's policymakers, whether that's regulators, whether that is the physician or the patient themselves. And so there's, there's a, and often what we sort of look at this is, is that framework that we need to gather the information in the first place to generate that insight is actually the same framework or infrastructure needed to push the information back out to those same decision makers. And I think that for us is a really important aspect of this as well. It's further down the line, certainly, we've got a long ways to go on the front end of that, but we think in the long run that's uh, we will certainly get to that point.